Hey everyone, Chef Sarah here with the Sylvia Center. We're a nonprofit specialized in providing food and nutrition education throughout New York City and Columbia County. Today we're making muffins, we are making blueberry muffins, and we are going to talk about leaveners. So leaveners are our baking soda and baking powder. If you have ever made cookies or cakes or muffins, it has probably called for one of these or both of these. There is a difference. You cannot always substitute one for the other. So in baking soda, you always need something acidic in your recipe for this to work. So if you've ever used these, you know that it creates tons of little bubbles in what you're making. Um, and it creates that carbon dioxide. And that is how our cookies, our cakes, our muffins rise without a leavener. They would be very dense and heavy, probably pretty chewy, and would definitely not be that light, airy, baked good that we all would love to eat. Um, so with the baking soda, it needs that acidity. So it needs buttermilk, it would need lemon juice, yogurt, um, something that's gonna provide an acid for this to be able to do its job. With baking powder, that acidity is already added. So you actually don't need to add anything acidic for this to work. So baking powder is what we call double acting. So it actually is doing its job twice. So the first time is when it hits liquid. So when we add our liquid to our muffins, it's gonna do the first part of its job. The second part of it is when it hits heat. So when we put these muffins in the oven, that is when it's gonna do that second, you know, acting and that's when these muffins are really, really gonna to start to rise. So in this recipe we're making, I'm gonna actually make three different batches of blueberry muffins. We're gonna do one as the recipe calls, which has a little bit of both. We're going to do the second one with only baking soda, and then the third batch we're gonna do with only baking powder. Then at the very end, we're gonna put all three next to each other and see how they look different. Okay, so with my equipment here, it's pretty simple. I do not need a big fancy mixer to make this. I do not need a bunch of whisks or anything like that. All I'm really gonna to use today is a nice big bowl, a spatula, and since I have it around, I'm gonna use this cookie scoop. At home, this part is not necessary. I'll give you some other options for this here at the end of the video. Um, so once again, a bowl and a spatula are gonna be your best bet. Here I have six tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that into the bowl. I also have three-fourths cup of sugar. Okay, we need to add an egg to this bowl as well. My main thing when I'm cooking with eggs is you should always crack this egg into something else. There is nothing worse than biting into a beautiful muffin and finding an eggshell. So this egg, I'm just gonna crack it right into this bowl and we're gonna add that in. Once I see there's no shells, we are good to go. Okay, and we're also going to add yogurt. I am using Greek yogurt here. You could use whatever you have at home. You could use Greek yogurt, you could use regular yogurt, you could use vanilla flavored. Um, if all you have is strawberry or blueberry or some other flavored yogurt, you could definitely use it in here. Why not? We're kind of about improvising and using what we already have at home. So I want to add a cup of this yogurt. This is gonna make our muffins really, really nice and rich and have a really, really great texture. Okay, so I have a nice full cup of yogurt there and I'm just gonna add that into our bowl. I always try to scrape out every last little bit. Okay, this is the first time we're gonna mix and I'm just gonna mix all of those ingredients together As I'm mixing this, I'll tell you what's going on with our oven. We preheated that oven at 375 degrees. Okay. 
So that's mixed together. Right now, it doesn't look like much, but you can see it's all combined. Okay. At this point, we want to mix our dry ingredients. In this bowl here, I have one and a half cups total of flour. I have one cup of all-purpose flour and a half a cup of whole wheat flour. This is another place that you could really improvise with this recipe. Um, if you only have all-purpose flour, use it. If you only have whole wheat flour, use it. If you have cake flour, why not? Use it. So you could use whatever flour that you might have. But since I did have both, all-purpose and whole wheat, I did a mix of both. So in this bowl, I am going to add a fourth teaspoon of salt. You always want to add just a pinch of salt, a little bit of salt to all baked goods. It's going to really, really help for all those flavors to come together. And it's going to just make it taste, add a little brightness and make it not taste dull. So that's why you will always see a little bit of salt in baked goods. We are also going to add our leaveners. Since this is our control recipe, as we like to call it, which is the one that we're going to make the correct way, we are going to do one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And we are going to do half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, so in this bowl, once again, I have my two flours, my baking powder, my baking soda, and my salt. Um, I like to just give this just a quick little mix. That way, once we add it to our other bowl here, everything will kind of be somewhat mixed together and you're not gonna get one bite that has salt, one bite that has baking soda, baking powder, etc. Okay, so we are going to just add this right into that bowl. And then I'm just kind of folding this together. One main thing secret to baking is to not over mix. If I mixed and mixed and mixed, this would become really, really tough and no one wants tough muffins. So I'm just gonna mix this together. This recipe does have a pretty thick batter that is very normal. So if this batter is thick, you are doing it right. Okay, so once I have that flour most of the way mixed in, I'm gonna go ahead and add my blueberries. I'm using frozen blueberries. It is not summertime currently, and I like to use frozen fruit when I cannot get really nice fresh fruit. Main reason for that is because they have a lot more flavor. Frozen fruit is picked at its peak of ripeness, so these frozen blueberries will actually have more flavor than the fresh ones that I could find right now. Another thing is you can keep them in the freezer for a long time. So if you bought frozen fruit and it's kind of just being pushed to the back of the freezer, this is somewhere that you could definitely use that. Um, I made this recipe with raspberries before and it was amazing. I've done a mix of blueberries and raspberries. You could use mixed berries. Um, if you have a banana that's maybe starting to turn and maybe it's past its uh, prime, you could definitely add, you know, smash that up and add that as well. So we are going to add blueberries and these are still right now kind of frozen because I don't want this to turn all of my batter blue if these were thawed out it would be the bluest blueberry muffins you've ever seen so we're just going to add that right in there and I'm just going to fold we don't want to smash these in there too much unless if you like it to be really blue then you can smash those blueberries completely in there. So I'm just folding, just trying to make sure everything is nice and mixed together. Okay, so there you go. You can see it's nice and thick. Those blueberries are scattered throughout. Okay, I'm gonna move this over so you can see this muffin tin here. So I have just a nice little simple muffin, muffin tin. Um, you have a couple options. You could spray it with non-stick cooking spray. You could put a little bit of butter or oil on that so they won't stick. 
Or today I had some little uh, cupcake liners, so we're gonna use that. Since we are doing a little science experiment with this, I wanna use a cookie scoop. That way these will all be the exact same size so we can really test out how the science experiment worked and what our different, different leaveners, um, how they look. So I'm gonna do one nice full scoop and put in each one of these. This is a really great kitchen tool to have around. It also makes everything you make look really professional because it's all the same size. Okay, at this point, these are ready to go in the oven. You could, um, if you wanted to add a little crumble to the top, I love doing a little oatmeal crumble it would be a fantastic little addition today we're just going to bake them just like this and these are going to go in that 375 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes i recommend checking them um after 15 minutes every two to three minutes and i'll show you what you're looking for here shortly Okay, so our muffins are out of the oven. You can see that our first two here turned out pretty beautiful. So this is our muffin that we use exactly as the recipe said, so baking powder and baking soda. And this muffin here is the one that we use just baking powder. And this last one that turned out not very pretty, uh, this is the one that we use that baking soda. So you can really see what a difference it makes by using baking powder and baking soda. You can also see that our muffins that we made as the recipe says turn out a little bit more golden brown and the ones using just baking powder turn out a little bit lighter. Um, this room smells amazing and I'm excited to go taste test the muffins. Um, thank you everyone for joining me today. If you want this recipe or recipes like this, if you want some fun activities or great community resources, go visit our website. Um, thank you everyone. Stay healthy and keep cooking. Have a great day.